Now listen to this. Yes. Here with a health checklist for women of all ages, Mark. Is GMA3 what you need to know, host? Please welcome back Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Mwah. I'm so glad that you finally nice got to meet my better half. Yeah. Thank you, likewise. So give us the checklist because I've got my own personal checklist. You got which I'll run. Don't we all? Yep. Um, I'm really glad you guys are doing this because we just got access to the Hologic Global Women's Health Survey. They represented 2.5 billion women around the world, women and girls, and they really found major deficiencies in terms of cancer screening, sexually transmitted infection screening, uh, and heart disease. So we're going to take it okay. decade by decade, so right? Let's start with the 20s. Teens and 20s, I would say a couple of big things, and parents need to know this as well. First GYN visit recommended for girls between the ages of 13 and 15. No pelvic exam required. Okay. First pap smear at 21 years of age, not before. That's going to kind of go up. Um, and again, this is the period of time where you want to start thinking proactively, even about your future fertility with something like elective egg freezing. The price is coming down, a lot of jobs are covering it. Start to have this conversation with your gynecologist. I know a lot of uh, friends of mine who did that uh, when yes. it was quite controversial yeah. and not so widespread, and they're so grateful that they did yeah. it because they were able to it, choose. That's when. right, and it shifts the paradigm from treating infertility to being proactive about okay. fertility. Let's cut to our 30s. 30s All yeah. right, so 30s is really, for most women, a lot of women, the pregnancy decade. What women need to know is that there are certain pregnancy complications like preeclampsia or gestational diabetes that are now known risk factors for future heart disease. So if you have one of these things or polycystic ovarian syndrome, you want to, again, be proactive, talk to your gynecologist about how you can lower your risk down the road. I'm so glad you're doing this because we often talk about this. If it deals with men or males, they find a cure for it, and they're so proactive. Yes, so I'm Mark so glad and Swift, you're, you are correct. I'm so glad you're doing yeah. this. I'm so glad that you've been listening I to have me. It. I, I sometimes up. feel like I'm shouting into <laughs> Never. the night. I hear everything. Yes. Okay, so what do women need to do, you know, in our age, our 40s? <laughs> our. I'm so glad you said our collective right. age. So 40s for many women is where you want to start to get really aggressive about breast cancer screening. Gold standard is still mammogram. Mm -hmm. Starting at age 40 for most average risk women, although of course there's ongoing debate about that. If women have dense breasts, which over 50% of younger women have, sonogram or ultrasound plus minus, you want to talk to your healthcare mm -hmm. provider about whether that's an appropriate adjunct to mammogram. And then for high risk women, MRI. Got it. Okay, so let's move into our 50s. Some of us are already there. <laughs> Yes, Kelly, some of us yes, are already some, there. Some so of us. average age of menopause is 52. Despite what women think, there is no one conclusive test for it. So those symptoms can start as early as 40s and they can go on through the 50s. And we should continue to ignore all of that, oh, right? Oh, of course. Yes. Mark, you look perplexed. Did you say through the 50s? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You'll be fine. I did, Mark. It's okay. You'll, Our, be, you'll make Mark, it. Mark, you know, there's a new specialty called Guy No. G U Y No. Yes. And it's kind of, no. it's made for people like you. Okay. But there are more options now, you guys, than ever for this hormonal <laughs> options, non hormonal <laughs> options, prescription, non prescription, lifestyle. But yeah. it's really about getting your doctor. You have to take the initiative. I found. I had to take the initiative. I would like to say it comes from the healthcare provider, but oftentimes you are right. Mm -hmm. And so this should not be something that's dismissed or swept under the rug. You know, about 15% of women have severe menopausal symptoms, and it's a quality of life issue, and there are more options now than ever before. That's great. What do women, and I'm asking this question for only for Schulweiss and uh, Kelly <laughs> what do women need to think about in their 60s? Well, okay. <laughs> Sitting, I'm joking. You were 40 three seconds ago. Okay, so 60s is really, you know, and I want to underscore this. Heart disease, number one killer of yeah. women and men. You should be thinking about this starting from birth, basically. Right. But in 60s is when you really want to get aggressive about knowing your numbers, your LDL, your bad cholesterol, your weight management, your blood pressure. It is so much better to prevent heart disease than wait until you have to treat it. I have to say, my friends in their 60s look amazing. Yeah, 50 plus yeah. 10. It really is interesting. 60s is the new 50s. What about 
women in their 70s. So 70s, when you have a lot of active women and you want to focus, when you say exercise, a lot of people just focus on the cardio. I know you're a big cardio fan, mm -hmm. but truly the more, we need to round that out a little Bone bit and density. take a holistic, holistic view. It should be strength training with weights. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mark, I know you're a big fan I of the am. weightlifting. Mm -hmm. um, so it should be weights, cardio, flexibility, and balance. Mm -hmm. And as you lock that in, not only in that decade, but well before, it really sets you up to live into your 80s and 90s and beyond. And, 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 living, there, well, and <laughs> living well. Living guys start going like this or on Yes, oh. women, women are like phoenixes. Yes. We rise, rise from the ashes. Us, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Can you tell us about uh, the COVID booster? Yeah, so uh, obviously I'm in touch with Dr. Fauci and Dr. Rochelle Walensky of the oh, CDC. Name dropping much? You know, <laughs> and so they, and, and we're hearing more and more data and more and more news about these boosters and the five through 11 year old age group. The thing about the boosters, the general consensus is that we will all need one at some point. It's not an emergency to rush out in a panic to get one right now, as Dr. Walensky said, walk, don't run for your booster. Mm -hmm. um, but they're really evaluating the data and they're not cutting any corners in terms of time to do that. All right, well, we That's appreciate great. you being Thank here. You, you always yeah. give us so much knowledge that we need. You can go to kellyandryan.com for all of these great tips. Be sure you catch Dr. Jen on her show, GMA3, What You Need to Know, weekdays on ABC. Thank, Thank you for being here.